If you can't do the drill I'm about to show you, you are seriously limiting your potential of distance with your irons. You actually may be better off hitting the ball a bit like this because that'll probably be just as good as if you can't do this iron drill. But it's super simple luckily enough and I'm going to show you what it is and why it's going to benefit you. Before we get into this lesson though guys, I want you to get better at the game, I want you to improve, so why not hit the subscribe button, totally free to do, and you get a free lesson every week from me to help you improve. Let's get stuck into this iron lesson today though. Like I said, probably a bit dramatic with that little example I gave there, but there's so many times I see this from my students and people when I'm walking the range, when I'm out on the golf course, and it even leads to a great stat that 80% of golfers hit their iron short on approach shots, and it's all because we don't actually deliver the club how we want to. We don't actually get the strike. We don't get the ball then turf strike, more importantly, all because we don't actually get everything working in the right manner. Most golfers do know, and I would imagine that you watching this now do know a little bit about the golf swing. You've played, you've studied, you've watched videos, and you've got an understanding. And like I say, a lot of my lessons do have that understanding as well. We know that we want to work the golf club around our body in an arc-shaped motion. We're gonna be using the upper body against the lower body, and we're gonna ultimately turn finishing looking at the target. Now there even just in that small explanation there was quite a few parts and what we need to do and why you're not getting the most out of your irons is because you've not got all these parts working at the right time think of it in this way if you were a clock and you had four or five cogs and one of those cogs just flew off or started turning in a different manner, the hands would be all over the place and we wouldn't get that consistency of time going around like it is. That's the same in the golf swing. If we get one thing firing out of tune, all of a sudden we've got to try and make up for it somewhere along that golf swing. And at speed, you know, over 60 miles an hour, generally most golf swings with an iron, it's going to be pretty hard to match it up. And what I mean by this is all about how we start our downswing. Because what I see is that a lot of golfers stand to the golf ball really well. They're gripping it really well. And the big fault is that as we get up to the top of the backswing, we're not starting from the ground upwards. So we're not using our legs to pump this swing forwards so we don't get this sort of little lag motion that we see in the pros what we get from most amateurs is that as we get up like i say it's been built pretty well but we're eager to hit it and all of a sudden we throw the angles we've got stored in our wrists we lose all the actual bend in our back arm our right arm as a right-handed golfer and i just throw the golf club down towards the golf ball and as i do this i'm either going to impact early i might actually just get the golf ball and get a little bit of that skinny horrible top one or I actually manage to get a strike on it but because I've thrown the golf club early what I end up delivering is something like this where my seven iron looks more like my wedge as I look down on it now I've not actually got the shaft leaning forwards I'm not getting the ball then turf strike all because I didn't start my downswing how I wanted so the drill that I want you to do to actually get used to actually being able to get your golf swing working at the right time get all the functions working at the right time and actually create the proper strike is a real simple little pump drill and it goes something like this as we start as we take our setup we actually almost could just put the golf club up into the top position because the backswing in this part is irrelevant really because we're actually going to stop up here and start the golf swing from up here so what we want to try and do is get the golf club up to the top in a good manner but from here what i want us to try and do is feel now that my front knee so for me my left knee i want to just pump that towards my target just notice that pump the club head's actually moving there it's starting to come down towards the golf ball but i'm not moving my hands and i'm not moving my arms what this means now is that i'm starting to store some energy and as i pump that hip and that knee towards the target i start the downswing in the right motion and what i want us to do is actually just hit some shots getting this feeling i want us to have one two pumps and then on the third we're actually going to start the downswing so it would look something like this without the golf ball we would go up we'd go one two three 
And what you'll start to do as you have these practice swings, you'll start to feel that you've really stored some energy and that you're really starting to get some speed at the right places of your golf swing. I would imagine, and hit the little like button for me if this sounds familiar, most of the, sw most of the swings that you have at the moment feel like all the power, all the speed is gone by the time you get to round about where your belt line is because we get that throwing that eagerness from the top and by the time we get down to the ball we're stopping trying to figure out how we're going to get the club on the golf ball so real simple and like I say a couple of practice swings I do this maybe with a seven iron and eight iron feeling about 60% speed to start off with but good setup up to the top feel the one two pump and each time as you're doing this, you'll probably notice as well that you're ending up in a better position from here and starting to actually get some stability in your finish. So once you are comfortable with it and you've had your practice swings, I would probably say that it's going to take, you know, 10 to 15 practice swings just to actually get used to feeling the pumping motion and actually getting it started at the right time. Let's just bring the golf ball back in and give it a go. And if we get it right on the first time, you've done exceedingly well because it will be hard to have that little sort of reaver and the pump start. But just give it a couple of goes. Like I say, with maybe a seven iron, eight iron, feeling about 70, 80%. But let's see if we can just get a little pump and then get it timed right. And if you get it right, you might notice as well that you get a little bit more distance with your seven iron than you would do normally. You might see that actually with this stop start motion, because it's timed correctly, you get a bit more crisp strike and a bit more distance, but up to the top, one, two, nearly just went a little bit early there. Just got slightly ahead of it with my first pump, but it wasn't too far away. Like I say, it is a bit of a tricky drill, but if we can get it right, we're going to see that we start to get everything timed up. So a little rehearsal again, one, two, and then let it go. It'll almost feel like you're starting the swing from up at the top, but let's give it a nice little go. Come on, good rhythm. Wait for it and pumps. One, two, a little bit better. We're getting the flight there and I'm starting to actually get a little bit of a divot after the golf ball. It is, like I say, a very tough drill to do to start off with, but once you start to get it, and even then when you're bringing it into a normal golf swing, what you'll start to really feel is that instead of rushing from the top here and really throwing it, you'll start to feel that this lead side here just has that little shift where you feel that pressure going into that lead side, and then you feel like you've turned and then the arms can come down and actually get the shot. But third time lucky, this is the one for me. Little pump, one, two, and then we get our strike. One, two, and there we go, crisply away. And I get a lovely time strike and my divot is nicely after the golf ball. If you are confident and you feel like you're starting to get it, then you can just build it back in. Like I say, you should start to feel now that in your normal swing, it's just going to be this that starts the downswing, this little drive here, not throwing the club down. So once we've got it and we felt good, we've had our pumps, just start to hit some shots off about 70%. We'll start to see then that we get nice strikes like that one and actually start to get more and more consistency with our strikes. So guys, the pump drill there, like I say, a little bit tricky at the driving range, it's a little bit easier instead of being off the grass, but give it a go, start to get that timing right in the golf swing. If we can start from the ground up instead of throwing the club down, we're gonna see more distance, we're gonna see more consistency, and ultimately, we're gonna see better golf. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that lesson. If you have, make sure you hit the like button, remember to subscribe, and we'll see you in another lesson very soon.